is Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa. And in about an hour, I'm going to teach you how to do this painting step by step. It's easy enough for beginners. It's fun enough for advanced artists. You can do it with your kids. You can do it with your friends. You can do it with your furry friends. Anything you want to do, we're going to do it on this painting. Get your paints. Get your easel. Get ready. Come right back here and paint with me right now. Let's go. ready to paint. Oh my goodness, it's the holidays. In case you haven't noticed by all the holiday decor everywhere and the Black Friday that has become suddenly the entire week that rolled into Cyber Monday that is now also a week. So I have been hiding in my art studio painting doing Rainbow Friday and Multicolor Monday just enjoying all my creative options. So today we're gonna paint Let It Snow which is a really adorable painting with snowman and a cardinal. I love it. You're gonna love it. We're gonna love it. But first, look at this. What's this? What is this? Magical, awesome. You've never seen it. You're like, what is that great thing? Okay, so this I wanted to show you guys because you know, we're giving the gift of our creativity for Christmas. And what you don't want to give is the burden of expensive framing. Not that I don't love framers everywhere. But these are Wilson Bickford beveled edge canvases. They have a one and a half inch edge and it gives it this cool 3D effect. Many of you have been talking to me about the surface treatment in canvas going, do I need to gesso this or treat this in some way? Is there something I need to do? Yes, yes there is. <laughs> Buy a really good canvas. Because if you start to value your art, your art's gonna start to have value and you're gonna wanna put it on a better surface. This has a beautiful medium tooth canvas and a really good gesso treatment on it. So you're not gonna have to keep treating it, treating it, treating it. Plus it has this beautiful edge surface. You can get that at Jerry's Art Arama. Mine is in Houston. Uh, I always go to Daniel Elliott, the manager, because he's my guy and he always knows everything. And you can go to him too. I asked, many of you have been saying how you go to the art store and you ask a question and then they give you guys the wrong answer. Daniel will give you the right answer. Jerry's will give you the right answer. I don't get anything for that. They're just my store and I'm just telling you. All right, Creative Mark brushes. These are my Ebony Splendors. We'll talk about those. We have a palette, our Christmas holiday palette. Happy holiday palette. All right, so, or, or any holiday. Okay, so our colors are Burnt Sienna, Southern Ocean Blue, that's Matisse Paints. You've gotta get it from Matisse. Cad Red, Nathal Crimson, Cad Yellow, Phthalo Green, Phthalo Blue, Dioxidine Purple, Titanium White, and Mars Black. And look guys, I am just painting with the structure paints. So here's a couple of things here on this, because again, you guys are asking me. I paint structure because it's a really professional quality paint. It's got a, a buttery texture, it's reliable, and it's in my everyday price point. There's certainly all kinds of brands of paint. This is just mine and I love it and that's how I get my results. I'm sharing that with you. Love Matisse. I actually really do love them a lot. And that's the only place you can get that Southern Ocean Blue I like to use. And then there's my Creative Marks, right? And these are the Ebony uh, Splendors. Here's the deal with these. I love these. They use this Tejan hair fiber. Um, it's a really good substitute for Red Sable, but here's the deal. They're great to travel with, they're super indestructible, and if you do happen to kill one, they're economical to replace. They give you this real professional result, 
without just killing your pocketbook. And since we've got to do all of this holiday stuff, maybe getting a little break, you could ask for these, you know, in the Christmas stocking and not feel guilty about it because it's not a million dollar brush, but it's going to give you a really good result. It's going to be life changing. Love my Ebony Splendors, Again at Jerry's, and that's just where I shop. All right. We must sketch in Mr. Snowman. And I have my pressed little charcoal here. But like I said, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you got some of that kid's chalk, this art at home mom says go ahead and use it. It's no big deal. We're going to sketch in and kind of lay out our painting. And it's pretty easy to do. Mr. Snowman, I'm going to make a little mark about four fingers from the top because I want room for a hat. And I'm going to come in... So there's the halfway mark. I don't want to be quite to the halfway mark. I'm going to come in to about there, right? So not quite the halfway mark, just a few inches over from the halfway mark. And I'm going to make a little circle sketch. That's going to be his head, his nice little snowman head. And this is going to be real fun because you're going to get to go off the edge in this crazy, crazy way. And I may have to talk to my holiday decorations here. I hope you're liking my festive decor because I like my festive decor. It's like such a good excuse to have to do stuff. All right, so then we're going to come down. And so here's the bottom. As you come up, there's a halfway point. Well, I guess that's about four fingers from the halfway point. I'm going to just finish off his body here. Okay, and that, that lets me know where he is. Then I'm going to come in and draw in my scarf. And what I do is I make a rounded line between these two circles. I follow the line of my head. I make a parallel following line. That's my scarf. And then I like to have a scarf that goes, kind of blows over this way, and then is over this way. And I'm going to draw this out for you guys, obviously, as always, on the little cam to show you how the lines all go. And I'll probably put it up on Pinterest so you guys can download or print it if you feel like you need to. All right, his hat. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to come down in a curved line up about two inches and make another parallel curve. Taking this right off and then the hat is about an inch in and comes off this way. Pretty easy. Two inches over from, two fingers over from center is the carrot. I'm drawing in my carrot curve line. Now listen, my carrots are never straight. They are artsy and wobbly. You know what they are? They're artisanal. That's, that's what I've been doing all week is artisanal foods and fr fruits and vegetables and all those good things. I like the wonky colors and all the fun of that. So now I know where my nose is. Now, obviously, can I have a cardinal, which I must have, perching on my snowman without a branch? So about three fingers up, I'm going to start the line of a branch. I'm going to bring it out in our usually little branchy way. What do we know about branches? Branches get skinnier as they grow out. So whatever width I'm going to start with, I'm going to have to join those lines together. I'm going to have to bring them together so it feels twiggly. That's going to be our technical term today is twiggliness. So here we go. Twiggly, twiggly, twiggly. Oh, it's a very twiggly little. You know what? And because I've got this cool little canvas, I'm going to take it off here. Aren't you guys kind of excited about this canvas? Some sort of ex But let me tell you, everybody who got one and bought one, loved them. That's just my experience with it. I really like them. I think they're so cool. There's, you know, all these fun little shaped canvases out in the world. And this is the one I just happen to like for my fun, sh like, blow people's minds little value of the canvas. So we've got a nice little twiggly. See me these little twiggly little branches here. Now, the bird. If you have owled with me, you're going to sail through the bird, right? The cardinal is going to be just like, oh, I'm a heart party professional. I'm an experienced heartist. I can handle that bird. But if you're new, no worries. It's just circles. This is a painting that if you're a new painter, you can totally do. Okay? So first, I'm going to make a fairly large, almost hand size, fat little circle. Because you know what's lovely in life? fat little happy creatures. That's what's lovely in life, right? 
it's just a circle right there. And then I'm going to come up with this line that like drives off and then bisects back in. It makes sort of like the shark fin. And I'm going to make a beak. Round that beak out. And then what do these guys have? They always have that nice little black area around their face. That's how we know they're cardinals. And then there's a big round eye. Yeah, we like that, right? Then we bring our half heart in for the wing. And here's the neat trick. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a tie. And you went, a tie? Yeah, I'm going to make a tie because that's a great way to finish his tail. Look at that. And you're like, oh my god, a tie is a great way to finish his tail. Yes, it is. It's a fantastic way to finish his tail. And we'll get his feet in later. And we know we're going to have a star up here. So let's just real quick, for the purposes of you guys seeing it done, right? Draw in the snowman. And you know what I might do? I might make just a really great little step-by-step -step of this guy for the Pinterest page. I'll put it on the heart party board and it'll just cover this up step-by-step because step. I have found you guys can do anything if you have the steps. You guys can just paint anything, craft anything, do anything at all if you have the steps. You're brilliant like that. I love seeing everything you guys do. I'm not really loving that carrot, so I might do a better job on my step by step, but it gives you the idea. And here I'm going to put in my little branch. Twigglies. What do they do? They get ever skinnier. Yeah, they don't have to go on diets. They just naturally are. All right, we're going to make the big circle. All right. Notice I'm not too stressed about these things. You guys get so stressed about all the little stuff, and it's like, dude, it's just art. This is just good for your brain and your blood pressure. Unlike shopping, which is not. <laughs> but it's fun. All right. Big eye, wing, and then, of course, our necktie. He's got a shorter tail because he doesn't have as much room. See? And then, you know usual we're going to do eyes here and then my happy smile. Notice that this little circle is smaller than this circle. So that just is the basic layout for Mr. Snowman. I hope you can see that. I'll put up a step-by-step -step of it. You'll be like, oh, that was so fast and easy. Thank you. Um, hopefully you didn't mind the time. So we're going to start out. I'm going to start in painting in the background. And what I have here is my number 16 but basically when you're looking at it you're looking at a you know half inch to one inch brush uh, it could be a filbert or square filbert is these rounded brushes they give you a nice soft blended stroke I just like them but if you need a crisp edge you might want to get a square you know it's up to you I'm gonna get a little water in my brush because acrylic paint is water based and you can mix acrylic paint up to 30 percent I'm gonna get my phthalo blue get a little of my dogs in purple Notice what I'm doing. I'm not going from the inside of my paint plops. I'm going from the outside. I am doing good paint management. We may not have life management, but hey, we've got paint management up in here. Now here's the fun of this canvas. Go ahead and paint this hysterically fun edge. Now listen, you guys can do this on a totally regular 16 by 20 anywhere canvas. I am just trying to answer the question. Look how nicely that paints on there. I'm trying to answer the question of like, hey, could my canvas paint better? And the answer is yeah. Canvases, like anything else, come in qualities, you know, and sometimes when you uh, cut costs, which I totally get if you have to, it does make you work more. That's really all it is, is you'll work harder. You can get there, you, I've seen you guys get results with like completely not even acrylic paints, just all other kinds of paints, you know? So that's just how you want to get there. Now I am making sure I do what? I'm making sure 
I cover the white of the canvas. I've got a little purple in here, you know. I've got a little white. No, no, I don't have a little white yet, but I'm about to get a little white. Notice me here, I'm gonna go get the scotch. Scotch of a little white. Why do I do that? Because I don't want one tone in my nighttime blue. Okay, another thing I'm not doing, guys, I just kind of need to know where my objects are. I don't stress as much as y'all do about having the perfect edge lines and stuff, but you can totally do that. It's if There's no fault in that. You know? Um, if you guys are new to heart party and you're just like like just doing this because you thought you'd paint a snow, snowman and have an at-home party with family or friends or children. Um, I have three children. They will. They are being watched. They will not be quiet. That's not happening. And you will hear them throughout the video and also possibly our dog, Greta. Because I do not live in an art studio up in the mountains where no one bothers me. <laughs> I am here in the burbs and this studio is in my home and I have kids I'm just lucky enough to have some help so I can make these videos that is of course our editor and uh, dear husband make sure that I have that and that's something I really appreciate I sitting is life-changing <laughs> look here look how nice that is around the edge now I'm moving along quickly enough where, you know, I can blend wet into wet. But, you know, you guys may not be painting as quickly. You might need something like slow dry. Oh, let me show you what that is. Slow dry. Okay. See this here? This is slow dry by Liquitex. Um, you can add that up to, I believe it's like a 40% mixture with your paint and it will just slow down the drying time of it. If you need more time to blend, you must slow dry. I don't know why I did that because we have the ability to speed up and slow down film so I could have just said it regular. And then John could have slowed me down. So he's going to be laughing in edits, going, what? Now, one of the things we are doing, which is just crazy, is we are completely stopping everything to make sure you guys get this up in time for the holidays. You have plenty of chance to paint it, give it as gifts. Um... Though if you do it on this cool canvas, you may be like, no, I'm not giving it as I really love showing this off to y'all today. Uh, I, I like the bevel edge canvases. I do. I do. Maybe not as popular uh, some places, but I think that they're awesome. I think that, you know, I think that what we paint has a lot of value, not just in our hearts, which is, it has the most value, helping us deal with our lives, enjoy our lives, celebrate our lives, get through the stress of our lives. It has so many benefits, but also it has real value in the world, like how paintings affect people, how people feel when they see a painting, and how it can reach them and speak to them in a really real way. It's, it's pretty special what art can do. I don't, I don't know about you, um, but I hear from you guys, holidays can be very stressful. Like on the road or at the grocery store or just at the mall. Um, people just, they're like festive, but they're kind of like an intense angry festive. <laughs> you're like, you're like, woo. You don't want to like upset anybody and say anything wrong. You just want them to be happy and get whatever sale item they're trying to get. Um, but being able to stay home and paint and make some of those gifts, whew, 
That takes some of the pressure off, doesn't it? Plus, plus, oh, but I have a fantastic family. I do. Uh, not just my kids, but my extended family is really, really good. Um, got great friends, as I'm sure you do. Um, but, hey, great. Like, the holidays, super stressful. Like, everybody just kind of gets so wound up, and you got your family there, and you can't really say anything because, you know, their family. Well, you could run out into the street with all your rollers on, screaming, and that is a good way to alleviate stress. But then the neighbors are going to talk to you. Or... Or, if you don't want to be the most interesting person in your neighborhood for the wrong reasons, um, you can take all those feelings into the studio and get them out on canvas. And the biggest thing that will happen is that you might paint something that is slightly disturbing to your family members. But it's out of you. What I'm saying is like when you paint, you can, you can get that joy and put it up on the canvas. You can get that sadness and put it up on the canvas. You can get whatever's happening to you up on the canvas. And you guys, woo! You guys have proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt the power of painting. Because I hear stories from y'all of the stuff that you guys are dealing with using art, uh, health recoveries, um, illnesses, real loss, big losses, divorces. It's amazing what you guys have taken and put into these paintings and put into your art. Um, coming back from all kinds of intense experiences and I am often blown away by what you can do with your art when it comes to just healing yourselves just feeling better about the world feeling better about tomorrow I saw something on Pinterest completely blew my mind away I hope my husband puts up like a graphic here. So it was an anacronym. It was on one of the inspiration boards that I love to follow. And you know I have my own inspiration board where I keep all my favorite uplifting quotes. Well, it was hope, but as an anacronym. And it was hold on, pain ends. And I thought, I'm not in any pain now, but I could never see that word again and not hear that in my head. Hold on pain ends. And I'm always telling that to my kids. No matter how bad you're feeling today, we can't sustain anything forever. Not joy, not pain. It does have a resolution. There is an end to whatever's going on. Um, and all you got to do is just hang on long enough for that to happen. And art can help you um, do that. I you know, we talk to other fine artists all the time, and they talk about the stuff that they are dealing with in their art studios. And it's big stuff. Our artists know this. Artists will, like, definitely put it in their art. You know, the colors will get a little bit intense, and maybe the art gets a little bit angry and frustrated. But that's the miracle art. Whatever you're feeling, you can, what is it, transmute it. You can change it. You can take it. And are you taking time, guys? Are you taking time? I love painting this background. It's just, I like purple and blue together. I just do. I like dogs and eating purple, and I love phthalo blue. I do. I like it. I like it a lot. It is my fave fave. Um, how's it coming? How's it looking? No panicking. This is just art. So what do we know about acrylic paint? We know that as long as it's dry, you can paint over it, right? So guys, don't panic. Just let it dry. Get the hair dryer out if you need to and paint over it if anything goes wrong in a way that you're like, oh my God, I'm not going to keep my twigs here like completely sacred because I don't feel like painting around them and I know I'm going to paint them back in. So it's not that big of a worry for me. If you're a very technical, organized person, and oh bless you if you are, um, you'll be fine. Just uh, just slow down and paint around it. Get a smaller brush. 
<laughs> you guys know you can do that, right? You can get a smaller brush. This is not the brush that you'll be forced to use for the rest of your art experience. <laughs> they come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and they do all kinds of things. Um, you know, change brushes if you're frustrated. It is not, you guys, I always say it's not the students, the paint, it's the tool, or it's the teacher. Like, there are so many good YouTube teachers right now out there. If I am not doing it for you, you know what, somebody will. Don't give up. That's my whole thing. Don't give up on painting. Just, you know, change your canvas, change your brushes, change your paint. You know, change your teacher. Don't. I love, love, love all you guys. I love all my followers. I love that you share your art stories with me. That's like my favorite, that you come to the Heart Party page, that you share your art stories, that you tweet with me, that, you know, you follow the Pinterest boards. I really, I know how valuable everybody's time is. I know how valuable your time is. And I appreciate it. That's why I really try to make sure that we have stuff for you guys to do that's fun and rewarding and exciting to do. Notice that I change up. Sometimes my paint is more purple. Sometimes it's more blue. Sometimes I add a little white. So it's not just one tone. If I feel an area needs something, I add it. Right? You don't want to be just one thing. You want to be multi-dimensional. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to make my husband like edit <laughs> for like two days straight to this, get this up for you guys. Um, you guys noticing the, the cool thing in the background there? That is my favorite little Christmas decoration, which is my snowing tree by Brylin Home. It's actually my first video that I ever put up on YouTube was my elf um, having hidden himself in the tree. Now see, I'm going to turn this and I'm going to paint the bottom. Look at that. Beautiful finished product. Then this doesn't just look like, you know, hey, some holiday painting that you did. This is really special now. You know, these canvases are a little more money. But I'll tell you what. Once you paint on a good canvas from a good company like Wilson Beckford, you are going to be like, I am never, ever going back. Now here's a good time to take a second, right? Look at your sky and, and just look for things that you want to change. Areas you might want to darken if you want to add some paint. Remember the differences between paint is the quality of materials. That's really what it is. It's, it's the binders that they use, the polymers that they use, and it's the pigment that they use. And, the, and then when you have a brand of paint, like if say you paint with me and you have finally given up and gone online and gotten your Southern Ocean Blue, which if you're trying to do oceans, just, just get this. I'm, I'm going to show you all how to do turquoise both ways, but just you should get it. And your Australian Sienna. Um, you're going to notice that different paints in the same line cost wildly different amounts of money. So like your titanium white, your titanium white would be a very reasonable amount of money, even for this giant tube. Ask for this for Christmas. Ask for your Matisse Structure Titanium White for Christmas. Because it's the best stocking stuffer, and you're always going to need 20 million of these, because white's the color you go through the most. It's one, and people can go, oh, I can, I can handle white paint. I could do that. I could get you white paint. The other art supplies are really freaking me out, but I could do this, you know. Um, help them out. Materials, that's what it is. It's the quality of the materials. And then I want to ask you this question. If this is your first time painting and you want to just paint with like an experimental canvas and you're just going through them and you got some different paints that maybe you already had from wherever you bought them, they're student grade paints, just paint with those. 
But if you're one of the people who's painted with me a little bit, if you're kind of getting your skills together, and you're kind of getting all your art determination and perseverance underhand, and you're like, wow, I'm really making progress. I'm painting here. Go ahead and upgrade. I always say, you know, hey, we can paint with coffee. Literally, people paint with coffee, and it's beautiful. But, um, yeah, treat yourself, right? Because you have value. Your creative time has value. And when you value the things that you make first in your heart, and then you put out into the world, well, that value comes back in ways you would never, ever expect. All right, give your brush a good rinse out. Oh, now. Now, 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 here we go. Ooh. Got my trusty, very essential art tool paper towel. Yeah. Okay. Two ways to make turquoise. First way is to just go ahead and get some Southern Ocean Blue and a little bit of white paint. All right. You didn't know this was going to be the trick to painting snow, did you? And you're going to paint in Mr. Snowman all in with this nice turquoise. Now here's the deal. Chickadees, little chickens, here's the deal, chickens. The deal is curve your brush stroke. Directionality of brush stroke. I know I seem haphazard when I'm painting. I've just been doing it a long time so I totally have this plan of what I want. But when you're new, really think about the direction of your brush stroke and if you've done Van Gogh Sunflowers with me, you know how to do this curve, rounded stroke, one of the things that will help tell the eye that this is a fat, happy, round little snowman is the direction of your brush stroke. Notice how I'm still on my Ebony Splendor number 16. I haven't even changed out. But you could. If you needed a different one, you could. You know, and this is what I like to paint with, but you know, hey, some people like love hog's hair or they they love a, a stiffer or softer brush. This just for me, it, it allows me to blend really well and still do wet into wet paint. And again, it is, I love these because they're quality, but if I mess one up because I didn't wash it correctly or I messed up in some way, I don't have to just cry and cry and cry, right? Because that's what happened. Now I'm going to come around here and make sure I go around the edges. Yes, I'm going to show you how to make turquoise in a minute with the other paint colors, but I highly recommend just, just go to Jerry's. I, I'm going to include the number to my personal art store, and you can just call Daniel. I've asked him if you guys could do that, and he said that that was fine. He may change his mind <laughs> if there's much calls, but, you know, hey, <laughs> they ship. But it just is worth getting... I love this color so much, and I'm really good at color mixing and can totally mix my turquoise, but, you know, I just love it. But if you had to mix it, you would take your phthalo blue, CCC, and your phthalo green, CCC, and a little cad yellow, a little more blue. See, there's just a lot of colors to mix here, and then you would add some white to it. And what do you know? <laughs> So, see, you can do this, and if you're doing oceans, it's a little deeper. It doesn't have the same brightness, right, that um, the Southern Ocean does. But there just isn't a color that you can't mix. Uh, at some point, I guess we should make a mixing book video so you guys can make your own color recipes. How fun is that? But see how that's nice? And it looks a little bit like a wave which is great because secretly I'm always getting you guys ready for the next painting. If you paint along with me and you're doing all of them, you may have clued into the fact that I am hiding some very intense little art skills in these happy little paintings. And I'm always getting you guys ready for the next painting and the next skill or the next art idea so that you guys hopefully will be at a place where you're like, oh my god, I'm totally doing original art now. I'm painting my own stuff. You know... Okay, so we've got that turquoise there, which you're like, it looks a no, I like snow. But no, it doesn't. But it will. 
And this is why it's always good if you can wait for the videos because sometimes there's these little tips like that you're going to be able to take and then go, oh my God, I can totally paint snow now. So, you know, always take the time to do the videos if you can, even though I try to do like a time lapse preview. And no, I love when you guys get excited and you paint them. I'm just saying like take the time to see what the video has to say because there's these little tips and tricks in here that um, you're going to love. And one of these is to paint the underpainting of your snow. Oh, there's an advanced art word. Underpainting. So in all an art, you've got to put in a layer of paint. It, it just takes a couple layers of paint to make a painting work. And oh, don't want to leave. Got hair on my brush. Sometimes when I paint this into my fine art, I'm like, look, it's DNA, so they can identify that I really painted it. But really, what it is, I just don't want to dig that hair out. Um, I don't do that in my fine art. I do dig the hair out. Uh, if you guys follow, let's see the fine art that I do. The which is very different than the paintings. And I've got that question is why are my fine art paintings different than my heart party paintings? So the heart party style that you guys are so used to, I I went to school at Prairie View A&M for advertising art. And then in the middle of all of that, I got an art agent. So kind of like a starlet, I involved to be an artist. I don't really know. Uh, what I was thinking, but I got an agent, and I was doing, um, you know, graphic commercial art for licensing market and for very commercial galleries that moved a lot of artwork, um, and that was a really good experience, you know, very very good experience. But um, this is where that's this style came from. You're actually sort of with me in my old advertising art style, and. That's why a lot of times these, these paintings are very timely. One of the things I was very good at was creating very timely, current, graphically engaging images that people would like to have around. And I, I guess I just really feel that one of the important things I need to do with Heart Party is make sure that you guys have paintings you want to hang in your home. That's super important to me all the time. I really want to make sure you guys have paintings that you want to hang in your home, right? Um, for all the Panthers out there, rawr. if you were from Prairie View and and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> and you'd have to be from Prairie View and to know why it's a wait what moment, but it is, you know? But I did, that's where I went. I went uh, with Reverend Clarence Talley, who's like one of my favorite artists, such a good artist. Uh, Professor Dorsey, who was certainly a challenge <laughs> to my way of thinking, bless him. Um, to, you're one of those in your life, one of those instructors, you're like, bless him, bless him, bless him, which really means like, oh, give me strength. <laughs> yeah, yes, give me strength. All right, so here we are. We've got our snowman in. We're going to get our bird in, our twig in, our scarf in. We're getting the underpainting in, right? So my number one thing I want you to do during the underpainting is don't freak out. It's just an underpainting. It's going to have like an ugly stage. I tell you guys this every single video, but just in case this is your first one, everybody's painting has a crazy stage. Hang it. Completion is the win. That's where the wind comes from. Because remember, we don't believe in like every fairy, mystical, wonky talent here. Not that don't, people don't have talent. But I think that perseverance, determination, and a series of skills mixed with your life is where the art comes from. So, you know, it doesn't belong to a rarefied few group of people who just deserve better. It belongs to you. Wiping that off. I think I'm going to need to rinse out my water, and I will trust that my husband in editing will catch that. Well, I thought I'd get water, and then I was like, mmm, coffee. I am drinking from my friendship mug, given to me by my friend Tasha. Hi, Tasha. <laughs> yeah, I just mentioned you in random videos, because it's fun for me. Because, you know, 
she's also an art at home mom and a super mom. And she's, I don't know if you guys have this, the mom that you call when stuff goes really weird with your kids and you don't know how to solve it. She's that mom that always has like some clever, loving, non-screaming solution that actually works. Yeah, so this is a special cup of love. And I'm just thinking about that this holiday season. The special cups of love that we have in our lives. Don't put your brush in your coffee water. Special cups of love that we have in our lives. Because we all have them. We have special people that just make us feel loved and wonderful. And let's, uh, I love taking a minute to just think about those people. Now I'm going to paint in my scarf with my green. And I'm going to do something that's going to blow your mind. I'm going to get a little bit of my naphthol, uh or CAD. It doesn't really matter red and mix it into my green and what this does because they are contrasting colors you can sound all knowledgeable down at the art league now these are contrasting colors and whatever colors are contrasting which simply put is just at opposite ends on the color wheel right they will gray or neutralize or knock back the color and in this case take me from a very bright emerald city green to a, I'm gonna get some more cat red, because I really like the cat red and the green, to a much deeper forest green. And I bet you would have never thought, hey, you know, I would uh, I would get the forest green. And I, you know, it was so fun, I just, my brother-in-law, um, he is his little scout troop, scout master guy. It's terrible, I don't know the exact terminology for that, because my husband was an Eagle Scout. <laughs> But his son is is going for Eagle Scout, and I think his youngest one is going to too. So they they've got two boys, Cody and Michael, and they're doing their scouting thing. And so they asked for a professional artist to talk to them for their badges, which I have to say was so super cool to even have them call me and be able to talk to these kids, you know, and uh, help them work on what I think is just a tremendous program. Love the Scouts. Um, I know it did really good stuff for my husband. And I have, oh, my cousin, Nancy, she also, this is, this blows my mind. She just volunteers with the Scouts. She doesn't have a child in Scouts, but she volunteers and she helps them out because she so believes that that is a great way to make a better future. And I think whenever we invest in our kids, it is a great way to make a better future. When you guys paint with your kids and you and you show me the paintings that they did, I tear up all the time when I see it. I just start to like cry when I hear your stories of like, you know, being pregnant and having kids and just trying to create some creative time for them and for you. It actually, all those stories mean a lot to me. I love hearing from you. I am still managing to keep up, which I think is really good. You know, trying to keep up with it, answer everybody, be there for everybody, answer questions, you know. Like, a good question I just got recently was like, I'm not happy with my, you know, umber, my burnt umber. It just, it just isn't covering, it just isn't covering. It's because it's a translucent paint. <laughs> but it isn't, it isn't covering, guys. I'm going to maybe get some burnt sand on this one. Mix it in. That's the other one that you can do. You can do your burnt sienna to darken your green. Now you're going to notice the phthalo, much like your umber, is also very translucent, which means um, even on a very expensive, heavy body professional paint, you're going to see some of the white showing through. We're going to have to paint our branch back over that. Um, and that's fine because we're doing so many layers because there is an underpainting because we're building up on the canvas, building ourselves up in our souls, and building up the paint on our canvas. Um, because we're doing that, you know, it's gonna work out. The other thing I wanna tell you that I don't know all of you know, is that you guys all really matter. Uh, that's another thing that I, I keep running into in the questions and the stuff where people are talking to me, is you don't know you matter. You totally matter. Everybody out there, you really matter. Really, the people in, in the fight 
doing the creative stuff, doing the painting. Uh oh, as uh, you probably can't hear the crying in the background, but that is my older brother has taken a toy from me, and I don't like it crying. <laughs> but yeah, if you're out there being creative, if you're out there painting, if you're choosing to do that with your energy, you're doing something super important, which is you're making the world better. You don't know it, but paint, painting is a big deal. I'm going to I'm going to lay some really crazy knowledge on you. I'm going to blow your minds. You're going to blow them. God, I hope I am. So just think about it when you're doing this little art thing, because I think about it all the time. I think about the little art thing all the time, which is this. Art changes people, and people change the world. I think a lot of us would love a friendlier, happier, kinder, more connected world. I think we all feel that. That's who we are in our hearts. That's who we want to be in the world. Um, and all the stuff that's out there, it feels so big. I feel overwhelmed all the time. I feel so overwhelmed by what happens around the world. I just, I really feel it for, I don't I may not have to know people. I may not have to be there, but I understand what it is to have a child. And I feel it. And, I, and sometimes I can't do anything about it. I'm not empowered to, but I can paint. Seems silly, but I can paint. I can share my artwork. I can do that now in 250 countries. I can do that all over the United States. I can just do that everywhere. And then those people can paint, and then the art goes out there, and, and the world is a little bit prettier. It's a little bit better. And that is my little battle. That is my little valiant peace on earth, goodwill to men, fight that I do when I do heart party. So a lot of how this started is realizing that people need art. They need to be creative. They need it really badly. They just really do. All right, bird. Bird, 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 bird. I don't stop my stick and add on my video YouTube because I sang that song. Maybe my husband will just cut it out or he'll bleep it or something. But you know what song I sang. Uh -huh. You do. You know it. Alrighty. Okay, so we're going to paint in the bird. And what do you know? We're going to use that. We're going to use our dark red, which is our naphthol red. And our green, wait, you're going, wait, we're going the opposite way? Yes, because when you add green to your uh, naphthol crimson, right, it's going to give you a dark, almost brick red. What do you got? Isn't color mixing fun? So we're just going to paint him in. Now, I know I've got lots of layers to put into him. So I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm not going to take my happy, fun painting time that is improving the world and panic. I'm going to just paint it in. You know, it's amazing how much faith and trust you need to have during an art process. You have to really believe that inside of you there is a creative spark that is worthy and deserving of making beauty. That's a big leap of faith, especially if you have if somebody took your crayons away from you when you were a kid and they said something crummy about whether you deserve to be creative, whether you had the mysterious big T of talent that everybody is supposed to have if they're going to paint. Only those people get to be happy. <laughs> right? In case they took your crayons away by saying something awful and you haven't been coloring and you haven't been painting and you forgot this is just fun. Kids don't worry about the stuff we worry about when they're being creative. I love painting with kids because basically, if they're making, they're happy. They're like, I'm making something, and therefore it is good. And I like color, and therefore it is good. And I like the story I'm telling on my canvas, and therefore it is good. And they really understand what creativity is truly about. It is not about your result. It was nice to get a good result. Creativity is about allowing your soul the spark inside of you to, to like light up, to have a moment, to be itself, to, to live in its truth, to shine. Yeah, all that big stuff. 
that's how big art is. You know, that's what it's about. See, I'm still on this one brush. You guys are welcome to change up brushes. I'm just so comfortable with my brushes that I'm like, it's good. It's good. That's what happens when you've been doing this a long time. Like, I do a lot of live painting events. Um, that speed paint of the deer is uh, from one I did. You know, and I love to do them. I love doing live painting events. It's super fun. All right. Okay, so now we've got this nice red body on the bird. It's awesome. I should love that we don't just time lapse through these whole lessons so we actually cover it. But you guys can always fast forward me. I'm not offended. If you're fast forwarding me right now, I'm still not offended. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm going to change the brush. I'll be right back. Okay. So we've got that. We're going to change some brushes. I think that I'm going to switch right now to my half inch angle brush, which is what I like to do because I like how it gives me that nice tapered finish. And what's our rule about this? That you begin the brush stroke on the shortest bristles and finish on the longest. So that that does this nice refined finishing line. Um, for girls, this is a little bit easier because it's really similar to most of the eyeliner brushes. So you're kind of like, oh yeah, I get that. For God, well, you know what, anymore. Maybe the guys are using the eyeliner brushes anymore. I've been watching some of the stuff that my kids watch on YouTube, and who knows? It's all sort of changing up. doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm fine. As long as people are being creative and happy and helping each other out, I'm for it. All right, let's get this branch in because it's bugging me. I'm going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of my brown here, and I'm going to deepen my bird. I'm going to burn my burnt sienna. And this is going to be my darkest color. And watch me. I'm going to come past my scarf. Look, I'm painting in front of that scarf. This is important. Making a half circle. All right. And that's how I'm putting that back in. And I'm talking to you guys about this all the time. That once paint is dry, you can just paint over it. You can fix anything once it's dry. I had accidentally painted it out. That's right. I do things accidentally sometimes. Just, you know, goofing and painting and talking. Like when I'm in here by myself, I'm not generally just rambling to myself. You know, it's pretty quiet and peaceful. So I'm going to come along here on the edge of the brush, over the tail, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to wander off, off my canvas, right? Coming back. Giving that little branch, this little meandering branchiness. So I like my branches to meander. You know, hey, you can put berries on your branch. You can put leaves on your branch. You can put pine needles on your branch. I love that you guys follow along, but then you, you know, change up the colors or, you know, you make it yours in some way. And I think that that's perfectly okay. Um, I know a lot of you guys are doing art shows now or selling to friends and family and you're like, is that okay? You know, I'm on YouTube and so that is okay with me. I know some teachers would say no, they were very uncomfortable with that. You know, you should just go teacher by teacher. I personally, if we do this painting together and you want to give a version of it, to all of your family and their extended cousins and the kids and you're like I am doing snowmen and you're like oh my god I can make a little extra pocket cash doing some snowmen I'm not stressed about it at all it just doesn't bother me you know my fine art I'm a little more protective of because that's you know that's my full kind of thing but this stuff that we do together go ahead it's all right with me I'm comfortable with it guys Part of the artistic process is, you know, getting to put it out there. All right, now let's make our carrot. So I guess you probably figured it out. We're going to add a little green to our cad red, right? Napal crimson cad red. Blue, yellow. Blue, yellow. So this is a red with more blue, and this is a red with more yellow. It's a brighter, warmer red. 
and you're like, well, that's a horrible carrot color. I don't like it. You should not be liking the color that you're mixing right now. It should not feel carroty to you. It should look really similar. You're going to be like, that is actually a lot like the burnt sienna. What's going on? That's the color you want. Just trust me, guys. Have faith. So we're going to come here. Creating a beautiful carrot line. Right, creating a beautiful carrot line. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing so good, you don't even know. You're doing really good right now. I'm right here with you. If you're starting to have a little moment and you're panicking at your carrot, just breathe. Mm -hmm. Let everyone in the family look at you like you're crazy. Just be like, I'm an art at home mom and I must breathe. Or maybe I'm an art at home dad. Or maybe I'm an art at home by myself person with my furry children, my cats or dogs. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy. But I'm just going to breathe them. And then they're going to go, yeah, or ruff, ruff. Because they want food or something. Because boy, they always do, don't they? <laughs> they always want something. All right. Now, an even more detailed brush, right? Because I want to get right in there. I'm going to get this little square, which is a 10, but I might even do a smaller. I'm going to get my black, right? I'm going to get my black. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to paint in the face. I'm not even going to worry about the eye. I'm going to paint that in later. I'm going to paint this black in right now. Oh, my mother and I went round and around about this bird. Oh, it was such a drama. So my mom, she also teaches art. And obviously, I'm greatly influenced by having grown up with her and her art process and her art journey. She's probably just gloating right now. Um, but so I paint this bird, right? I mean, I'm grown. I think I can paint a cardinal and sell artwork, pay all my light bills with it. I'm like, I think I've got a cardinal down. So we talk to each other on Pinterest. We send each other pins on Pinterest. I don't know if you've ever done this. We send a message or a pin on Pinterest. I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about this now. But totally out my mom for what she did. I'm going to out her out. Okay, so I send her this. And I'm like, oh, look at what heart party is going to do. It's our Christmas episode. I'm so exciting. And she calls me right up and she's like, the bird is wrong. It's like you don't have the black right on the face. I don't like it. And I'm like, uh-uh. Oh, no, you did not, Mom. Mm -mm. I'm in my house, in my own studio, away from home. It's shocking amount of time that I'm not going to share with you. And I'm right. I know how my cardinal's supposed to look. And I'm like, I'm on the phone going, I have licensed artwork. I... I paint professionally. I'm just coming apart. I'm like just coming apart. You know how you know how your mom can just unwind you in a way that no other human being on earth can. <laughs> Welcome to the holidays. So that's happening right now. I'm freaking out, but I'm on Pinterest, and now they have that send a pin in private message tool. So I'm on there, and I go cardinal. Well, you know, like a million and a half cardinal pictures showed up because we all have animal boards, right? <laughs> And I just start sending them. It's like a full-on onslaught. Cardinal, 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 Cardinal. Take that, take that, take that. Here's an albino one. Here's a yellow one. Here's all the ways Cardinals come. And all of them with the face how I like to paint it. And she's like, oh, something's happening on Pinterest. Do you have, are you having a feeling about the Cardinals? She's like, I'm not trying to be counterproductive. <laughs> I, I just thought you'd like to know. I was just like, oh, yeah. I feel like I won the argument or she just decided that it was just 
it's fine and she let me have my own way but this is how we're painting the cardinal and my mom is wrong and that's that yeah mm-hmm so <laughs> now you have insight into the drama of art families beak we're going to put the beak in which means i'm going to take an even smaller brush but smaller than this this little brush which is a i'm totally assuming my husband can cut all these walk on walk offs <laughs> anyways i'm gonna take a little bit of that black and brown that i had i'm gonna come over to my yellow and I'm gonna, oh, and you're like, oh, I don't like that color. Yeah, yeah. You want a dark, dingy kind of yellow here for the beak. Because what we wanna do in our acrylic paint right now, especially if we're painting a good paint, we're painting a, a professional paint, is normally, if you're painting a high quality paint in acrylics, you often paint your darkest color to your lightest color, right? Oh, I don't know if you can hear the laughter, but I hear my son's laughter, kids' laughter, is the best laughter. Like, I, I, I mean, I can be watching something I think is really funny, but I will never laugh as well or as hard as my son laughs about anything. Guess what? This is my advice, because we're going to be painting some white now. We're dry. Get some fresh water. You, me, let's go. Zoom! <laughs> Back with fresh water. And yes, you do want it. And you may want to put a, like, if you have surrounded your white paint, I, I put a little more paint on my palette than you need to. I do that so you can really see it on the camera. It's just a decision I make to make your guys' time easier. Right? But just real quick, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to paint in the snow. Guess what, this is gonna work. What you want is a square brush. There, there it is. So this is a one inch square brush, okay? Not a comb, but it is a square. And I'm going to have it fairly dry. Do you notice I dried it off? And I'm gonna come pick up my white paint. And I'm gonna start laying it on. Remember we always are talking about the pressure that then some people were like, oh no, we can't do cat pressure because we don't have cats. All right, and then I'm like, Angry bears, disgruntled dogs, just like anything that you're nervous to touch. How lightly would you touch it? Sunburns, how lightly would you touch that skin? What we're talking about is a very light, feather light, soft touch. And that's what you want. Now, near the nose here is going to be my whitest. As I'm moving back here, I'm going to keep lighting up lightening up my pressure and applying less paint. See how the paint here, are you seeing, yeah, you're seeing that, is the heaviest right here, okay? And I'm not even really getting water because I want a heavy paint here, right? I'm letting some of the blue, now this is like, now you're like, wait, you're letting the blue show through. Yes, yes, this allows it to have that Arctic cold, feeling that you want and you're like oh my god I can paint all those penguins that I like so much yes yes you can so here we go and then I'm coming down a little bit and this is really about just learning how to lighten up and relax as you're going because as we go back we're going to be lightening up see light 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 letting the blue show through Focusing the white. Let me get some of this. Right here. And this is where, like, if you're bringing your stuff to the local craft fair, if you're showing it off to the family member, this is where they're blown away and they don't understand how you did it. Because there's certain things artists even, and definitely new artists struggle with painting, which is things that are not an obvious color, things that are, are not an obvious shape, right? So like, um, just naturally in our brains, so like snow is very hard, wind is very hard, and yes, you can paint a breeze. Um, and glass, and then of course the uh, grail, which is water. Now, everything I'm going to be doing, if you're following me, you follow my time lapses, because I'm going to be doing some 
crazy, blow your mind paintings I'm going to be showing all next year with water. The whole thing is going to be about um, really Bucephalus. If you uh, know him from history, he was Alexander the Great's horse. He was a real horse. He has a whole myth around him. Oh, look, we're educational now. Yay, homeschoolers! <laughs> Anyways, there's Bucephalus, and he was this great war horse that Alexander rode, and he was sort of like the original Excalibur. He was the, the original amazing myth. See me lightening up here? And so all of my paintings are going to really mostly be starring him, uh, and it will be all these horses that are swimming, and you're going to see them swimming from like top down or from underneath looking up. It's going to be all these really wildly aquatic pieces. You're really going to enjoy them. Uh, I'm really looking forward to bringing them to bear this upcoming year and like taking them out and showing them and getting exhibits and you know selling them. And I, I will be selling them so if you see something that you're in love with you know write me about it because they'll be for sale. Um, you know, you're going to love these, but they're going to be all about water. So believe it or not, what I'm doing here, <laughs> even though it seems real simple, is teaching the fundamental understanding, the beginning of that understanding about how you might do something like snow or how you might do something like glass or how something you might do something like water, right? I'm not trying to hit you with the whole skill like right away. I'm just kind of opening it up. It's sort of like, you know, when you're learning anything new, there's fundamental things that you want to learn and then you build them up. And you build them up and it turns into this life skill this ability to tell your story so like say you live in an area that has a lot of snow I know I have a lot of viewers in places that snow right and they know a lot about snow and so they'll be able to take this and be like oh wait I get it that's how I would paint that. And I have a lot to say about snow because this stuff is like everywhere and it's here like all year and it never goes away because snow is one of those things where like you're really happy when it shows up initially but then if it stays too long you're kind of like I have shoveled enough of this. I, I was born in Aspen, Colorado. So it's like I have shoveled enough of this. I have looked at enough of this. I, just, I don't need to ski down it. I don't want to get my snowmobile out. I'm just over the snow. That is, that is snow. But if it, you know when you first get it, oh, it's so fun. So fun. And you certainly always hope to, during the holiday season, have some snow. I am in Houston, Texas, so uh, no snow right now. <laughs> and when we get snow, it just basically means things have gone really, really wrong. See how I'm still just doing this light brush stroke? Very dry brush. Light brush stroke, dry brush. Literally what you want is areas of just pure white and then, the, and then the blue peeking through and allow your brush strokes to talk about the shape of the object, the shapes that you're seeing, kind of trying to dig that out there, you know, and I love how going on. Doesn't this look good? I'm sorry, I cannot say it enough. There's one of those hairs. DNA! DNA. <laughs> DNA. Uh, yeah. Alright. There you go. <gasps> snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. And I'm not singing that other one. Because my kids have sung it so much that I'm like, okay. I don't want to build no snowman. <laughs> I do like that. Do you want to get some Starbucks? I just love YouTube. I love some of the songs and the content created on this in this space. It's like amazing. Isn't it amazing that I can sit there and make this and paint with you in your home? You know, do you know how much like a workshop costs? Like if you gotta go to a workshop if you wanna say come paint with me and paint like in my final little space, that is anywhere from two fifty to five hundred dollars. It's like the cost of a workshop. And that's if we haven't traveled somewhere really fun and beautiful like say Ireland or France or Hawaii you know like some place that you might want to go not like Texas but <laughs> you charge more. I think Texas isn't beautiful it is. Lost Maples Park is very pretty and we also love what do we love? Marfa. Shout out to Marfa. If anybody from Marfa is painting with me oh my god you better comment. Marfa. Okay. All right. 
But actually, everybody, click comment, like, subscribe. As always, you know I appreciate it. That's, you know, that's how I go. Keep painting with me. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Snowman, I paint snow. I paint snow. I paint snow. Nobody needs to know, no, no, that I paint snow. I paint snow, and they don't know how. No, they don't, cause I paint snow. Oh, my kids are gonna kill me later. <laughs> oh, one of the great privileges in life is um, embarrassing your children. And, and if you are a little brush painting along with me, I'm sorry. It's true. It's all I get is a mom to get back for all the stuff I gotta do is is either I get hugs and kisses or sometimes I get to embarrass them terribly. Makes me happy. Oh. So, scarf. This is a fun thing to paint. We're gonna rinse our brush again. Rinsing our brush again, okay. I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna get some green. I'm gonna come over to my yellow. Get a little green and yellow, still mixing to the outside, conserving paint. Alright, so a lot of you guys ask me, like, how can I lighten red without adding white? Yellow. How can I lighten green without adding white? Yellow. And we're going to come to the outer edge here, see this? We're leaving this darker color that we put in doing that dry brush again that we've just gotten so good at and sometimes you want to grab more of your green right and we're just giving it that extra layer okay we're just coming in and giving that extra layer now I've got some pure green right here see I'm just sort of building this up pure green you can even rinse brushes it blends in and it's just shading out that is how we do it. Just get some pure green here. And we need it to just sort of dry brush over this. And there's some yellow on my brush, like just some cool streaking. This kind of stuff you've got to just sort of roll with. You just want to roll with and enjoy. I'm actually teaching you some wet into wet painting techniques that you're going to be really glad we have for later. Because I'm going to just keep putting more and more stuff up. I have so many videos planned. So many videos planned. I'm gonna have a, a just a bunch of stuff coming up, and we're gonna have you know obviously the May the Fourth be with you stuff. We've got the real Van Gogh Starry Night. We have Rainbow Man Unicorn coming up and a Sugar Skull, and then uh, one of the ones I've got coming up that I'm really excited about is on how to paint. Uh, with Parkinson's or uh, different mobility issues. Uh, there's a whole bunch of materials out there. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. And because I, I talked to different people who are like, you know, I started painting, I had Parkinson's, or I started painting, I had an injury, or how, for whatever reason they came to paint with me and maybe they don't have a traditional painting process because of what they have going on. So my big thing is like researching it and getting back with them and saying, hey, you can do this. Well, I'm going to put that all together in a really special special video uh, which hopefully is really this is thalo green gonna help people that's kind of the whole point right battle the evil in the world do art i cannot fight the evil but i can paint and make the place a little bit prettier that's what i can do i can also be kind to others definitely add kind to others in there <laughs> okay so we've got our little lip here Right, we've got our little band. This is just pure green. I'm gonna come back with some more yellow green. I'm gonna definitely get back into that. But I want to define the, oh, I gotta come around the edge here. Don't forget to paint your edges, all right? Don't forget to paint them. The green in his scarf is important. Take the time, you'll be glad you did. Where are you going, right? You're spending your time painting. I, you know, I realize you guys might have to paint a little bit with me. Turn off the TV. Go do something else. Or it might be children or furry pets. Furry children or human children. You know, they're both important to us. Take care of the people in our lives we need to take care of. Be the good human beings that we are. Right? 
So now a lot of how I define that is allowing that brush stroke to show the direction of things. So I'm going to get some more of this green. I'm kind of leaving a space between my brim line and my hat. And now I'm going to come back to the yellow. Now I'm going to come back to the yellow, get a little water, get right into this green. And then I'm going to get right in there. And why am I, what, you keep going, why is it lighter here? And get, because believe it or not, at some point there's going to be like a star here, and that would be because you know you must have a star. So um, it's going to have a star there because the night does not twinkle without stars. And we are all stars, you know. We are all stars in our own weird little show. I certainly am a star in my own weird little show. <laughs> okay. Yes. Embarrassing the children. Okay, all right. Do take the time though, even though I'm like, oh, my kids will be all like, do take the time to dance in your art studio. Uh, I've, I've got an artist friend. He's that manager at uh, Jerry's Art in Rome in Houston. And he always talks about how in his studio he plays music and he dances. I think every artist I know has a story like that. Um, you should be dancing in your art studio. There should be music. There should be laughter. There should be good food, something nice to drink or eat. It should be a space of really great joy. And we don't make, you know, unless we're having a party, right? We don't give enough time to joy, do we? We don't give enough value to joy. What is the gross national product of happiness? Blowing your minds. Gross national product of happiness. Because we don't have control of a lot of things. We only have control over how we feel and the thoughts we think. That's what's under our control. You know, un unless you're actually somehow like a very powerful person and you actually do have some control right now, then you might be having a different experience than the rest of us. But most of us just don't. So I've got all that in. Then I'm going to do what I'm going to do what? White. I'm going to get some white. Come in and get a highlight. It's like a mint green like a mint, right? And very lightly, because the paint is wet, come on top and make some highlighty strokes along the edge here, filling out my little scarf. We may have to do I paint the scarf dance in a minute. See how light I'm doing that? Alright. Pick up a little more. This leading edge here. See, and sometimes when we pick a leading edge and we highlight it, this painting is done in a very outsider out art style. Very American craft. And I like that very much. Um, I think it's a really valid way of painting. I love the artists that have mastered this style do some really incredible stuff with it. There's a lot to do with your art. There's art leagues. Um, I'm a member of the Visual Art Alliance. I like it. You can, anyone can be a member. If you are not, and you're kind of seriously getting into your painting and wanting to take it to the next level, that's a good thing that you can do. Visual Art Alliance. Um, but there's art leagues in your town and there's probably painting guilds and just different groups that get together that meet that are about painting and that can be a really good thing for you you know as long as the group has a good energy right so you were just getting that hat in getting the layers and levels because it's a knit good so it would have there we go all right a scarf. Oh yeah, we're doing it. I painted a scarf. I painted a scarf. I painted a scarf. Woo! Now, de definitely go like, I'm so awesome. Take some time to celebrate yourself. Even if everyone in your family looks at you like you're mad. 
celebrate yourself a little bit. I bet, I bet you have not been nice enough to yourself this week. It would be dollars to donuts, you have not been nice to you. All right? Maybe you've been nice to everybody in the line and you've had the holiday spirit everywhere you've gone, but you haven't been nice to you. That's the hard person to be nice to, isn't it? The person that you are. It's hard to be nice to yourself. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this yellow and a little bit of this raw sienna. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to mix that yet. And you're like, when I started, it's okay. Just leave it there. It'll be there when you get back. Okay. First, I'm going to take just the raw sienna. And it's got maybe a little bit of tint in it. You could you could add, if you feel like it's too bright, you could add a little blue to knock it back just a titch, but you want it to be fairly bright because you're going to come at the top of your branch and go down. You're making some bark. So you're making this little highlight here. Let's see if we can. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. All right. And that, hopefully there's a up close little handy cam. Detail works, you can kind of see what I'm doing up close if you need to. See that's another layer. I'm gonna come here and my trick is I'm gonna follow this upper branch line first. Okay, oh, yeah, I come around the edge. Don't think you're a magician if you do one of these gallery wrap bell edge pieces. They'll be like <gasps> Why'd you do that? I love your painting. It's so gorgeous. Can I buy it? I really hope I get one for a gift. That's what they're going to say. Materials matter, guys. When you value your creative voice, then it will have value. It's the number one thing I'm always saying to new young artists is that your talent has exceeded your materials. Be really aware when your talent which is really just your skills, when your skills have exceeded your materials. You cannot be getting into art college drawing on lined paper. You're going to have to use a beautiful pressed paper. You're going to have to start showing that you see your art as having real value. Otherwise, you're not going to get anyone else to see that it has value, no matter how beautiful you paint. Okay, so we have that. Now we're going to get over and get this kind of browned yellow. Right? Come on the top very lightly. This sort of color. Isn't that nice? Yeah, adding some branch. See, now that my trick to this, and I'm teaching you this everywhere, this is our skill, this painting, is this light, light brush stroke. That's the skill of this painting. More DNA. So much DNA in this one. Right? my son. <laughs> I never know if you guys can hear the kids in the background. They're such good kids. Pretty noisy. That's the thing when we talk about kids. But how noisy? That's showing. All right. So see, now if you painted out too much of your brown, you can always go back in and add some mid-tone like this. Now, some of this can be harder. If you find you're fighting the paint, don't make the assumptions that you're untalented. It could just be that the paint you're using doesn't have the pigments, polymers, and mediums needed to carry the stuff off. It may just be a materials thing. You know, two things to do there. Cut yourself some slack. It is what it is. Or go upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> All right, carrot. because right, I'm sure it's been bugging you. So we're going to come back and I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. I'm going to mix it in to my naphtha. And I'm going to start coming here. Well, look at that. Against this dark brown, it's suddenly much more orange. It's amazing how this works. We're layering up the carrot and the nose. This is what takes us from just being like whatever craft painting to a really beautiful work of art. It's the attention to detail. It's the love you put in it. Do you love what you're making? Do you love how you make it? 
right? And then I'm going to get some of the cad red and a little bit of cad yellow and mix them, right? Making a very light orange. Adding a, let me move this up here, adding another layer, making it, making it, making it, making it, making it, making it, yeah. Still getting used to that up close can. Right. Then I'm going to get just the CAD, put it right here in the middle. It's amazing. And I'm making these little dashes. I'm not, look at that carrot come to life. And then the next thing that you can do if you really want to pop your carrot is mix some white into this color. And you'll get like the soft peach, add a little yellow to it. You want it to be fairly bright. Go ahead and just pop some highlights here and there. So pretty. So pretty and fun to do. And it's these little details, guys. It's the little details. Get too much yellow going in there. Come back with your cad red and knock it back. Maybe I'm just outlining the little bottom here. Just take this, just take the time to really do your artwork. Look at that carrot. Look at it. Look at it. I made it a carrot. A snowman. I did it. I did it. I did it. I know I know I did it. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so you've accomplished all of that. I'm noticing that I've got some canvas that showed through, so I'm going to grab some of my phthalo blue. And I'm going to make sure that that's gone. So I don't want that there. Uh, I might need some purple. So like whenever you've got that going on, if you look at something and you're like, I don't like it, uh, change it. Change it. This is art. You do not have to live with it. You may have to live with a parking space, you do not like at work, but you do not have to live with anything on your campus. You may have to live with a neighborhood association you do not love, but you don't have to live with anything on your campus. You may have to live with a relative that tries the very fiber of your being to be a good person. It makes you work really hard for that, but you don't have to live with anything on your campus. I'm just saying, not to quote Bob, not to invoke the Bob, but this is your world. You make it what you want. Sometimes Afro-haired painting teachers know exactly what they're talking about. In fact, I'm just kind of like, if like an artist like does not like Bob Ross, I start to question them as an artist. Because I'm like, dude, brought painting to America's living room. Everybody watched him and thought about being creative. That, that is incredible soul work right there, getting people to paint. So, so I'll take a moment and send Bob light and love wherever he is. No, he's doing something great. Happy little mountains, little trees. A bird. It's bird, bird, bird. Uh, yeah, I don't want to have an ad put on my thing. Yeah, anytime like you, you <laughs> Anytime that <laughs> you do anything that they don't like, they they make you. Okay, so we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna get just maybe a touch of blue this time. Just a touch though. I want it lighter than my first time that I painted it. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come put my wing back in. Oh, that's so nice paint that back in. I'm going to let some of this dark show through as I'm putting in my wing. See, I've knocked back my red. It is essential to knock back your red a little bit because you're going to use the pure pigment. We do some crazy color there here. You don't even know. You're going to use the pure pigment to make things pop. And that's why we take the time to grade out and push it back. Uh, all those very offensive one color paintings from the modernist movement that you see at the museum that everybody's like, I don't understand why that's in the museum. 
that's what that is about. It's about understanding how color affects psychology and affects the eye and your brain. And when you're looking at it, you're looking at a painting that is an academic study in optics and our perception of the world. But does this color go back into the canvas or does this color come forward so the next time you see it at the museum instead of like spitting in your coffee and throwing it down and be like, what? Be like, oh, I noticed that that warm color comes close to me and that cool color pulls back. And that is an interesting push play, bigger foreground. I don't need to think about that anymore. I'm going to go look at this other piece I really like from the impressions. That's how you handle it. You don't know, like lose your kit. You don't have to do that. You don't have to get all mad. We're coming up here. I'm using this square still. So I like my square, it gives me a nice clean edge. Now one of my tricks here is I'm going to leave a little bit, I'm going to go real light with my paint around the wing. That way I'm creating this implied line, another very advanced art school term that I'm just sharing with you guys. And I'm going to really work around the face here. I've grayed this red a little bit so there's even another layer of like bright, bright, dark red that I could put in. I'm coming up to my little belly. Right. See how that's just kind of in there? Yeah, I guess that's pretty well on that. See that? I'm going to come get that grade naphthol crimson with a little bit of phthalo. Here, I'm going to define my fabulous tail. I oh, am. Yeah. You're still painting with me. Thank you. You are so brave for hanging in. So brave. Because Lord knows I'm chatty. I mean, that is their free lessons, but you got to listen to me. Because <laughs> I'm going to be talking. Mostly because I feel really weird just sitting here quietly painting. That just always trips me out. All right, another layer. We're going to rinse out our brush. And I'm going to get my cad red. I'm going to get just a scotch, just a touch, just as if it were chili pepper, a little bit of blue. I don't want it to be so vibrant. I need to knock it back. Do you see it knocked back a little bit here? You see how it's knocked back a little bit here? Knock it back. A little bit of blue. I'm just touching it and then I come over here. Oh, but it's not that dark. Okay, now I'm going to come here. I'm going to create, I'm going to follow my wing line that implied line with my brush stroke. I'm going to make this nice curved wing line coming down. You guys can do this. Just slow down and breathe and just think about it and you'll be fine. It's like I'm trying to create a feeling of a rounded shape right there. Now and I'm going to just do this little line right here. But I'm letting all up the two layers that are there still show through. That's the trick. If you need to scotch, scotch, treat it like chili pepper. So for the two of you out there that are like, no, I just eat chilies whole. Just crazy. I'm sorry, but you are. I love you. And I love that you're painting with me if you're a chili pepper eater. But dude, I don't even know how you do that. So that stuff is not food. Who figured out that was food? Right? Like, what crazy person was sitting there looking at those red, scary-looking things and thought, you know, I'm going to eat it. And then had the experience you would have with chili pepper and then thought, no. What I need to do this is again and again until these chilies taste good. Who did that? Like, I want to know that person. To me, that's like such an interesting person in history. I bet their story... I just, like, I have to wonder what was their life in their community with their tribe. You know what I mean? Like, the history of food and how people ended up eating it, I bet, is very, very interesting. Because there's some stuff out there I just don't understand. Now, here, as I come around the head, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to get real soft. I'm going to be round with my brush stroke. And I'm going to leave this lower part here, not with the slightly darker red. And I'm going to leave this part here. Because what I'm saying, and this is very important later if we ever start painting people or anything, that this is a shadow. I don't make like a dark black line. Not that that isn't awesome, but I don't make a dark black 
line, I'm going to leave a little shadow. And you can leave a little shadow. Think to yourself, I could do that, and I could leave a little shadow. It can't be that hard. I suppose I could paint. I survived that paint night, and I was drinking, and I got through. Maybe that was the clue. Maybe that was the magic right there. Um, I do these earlier in the day than generally one would have wine. Not always, but generally I do. So I'm uh, not anti-wine. I just have to continue raising children after I stop filming. So that's what happened there. All right. So um, I'm coming with my pure cad. Look at that on this outer edge here. Pure cad. And you're going to just really see that popping. That is what is going to really show that our cardinal is this incredible red. So weird how that works, but that is what it is. So I've got that. It's just the outer end of the wing. I'm not taking it across the whole wing. I'm just taking it to some of that space. I'm doing some outer tip here on the tail. Right. Not the whole tail. It's just so important to make this you're like, oh my god, I didn't know that painting this little cardinal was going to be so much work. Yeah, it is. That's why you're awesome. That's why you do the I did it dance as soon as you're done. Because it's impressive what you're doing. It's not just art. It is how your soul communicates. All right, come here and put a little bit of this bright color I'm leaving a space here, and leave a lot of space there, but we'll put a little bit on the outer part, like part of the belly. Okay. Now, woo! Now, yellow into it. All right? I need some pure yellow. If you have to go get pure yellow, go ahead and get pure yellow. All right? I've lightened that cat red. If you get some white, if you need some white, some white. Now, because we know we're going to have a star. Kind of liking it. Okay, on the outer edge of that wing. Bring in a little bit of that highlight. Oh yeah, you're showing it. You're showing that starlight. Maybe a little bit of the tail. Dust the belly, it's an interesting trick. A little bit here in the center, so it's highlighted. Oh, see? Showing some shape. Then, and you're like, wait, how are we not done? That's right. You're just going to be doing red forever. Red forever on your painting. Get some pure red around. Just in some places here, I'm dusting it. And again, I'm using that crazy light pressure. And I'm not paint, I'm letting the paint show through is what I'm doing. I'm letting the paint show through. And that allows me to create a layered effect or impressionistic effect. That's what the impressionists were doing. They're putting paint next to each other, while it's sort of playing on the canvas, allowing the colors to vibrate next to each other and affect their color. And that is what you are doing on this bird. Yeah, that is what you're doing, you and Monet. Right. Some red right here in the tail. And there he is. He's just a beautiful, beautiful bird. And he's looking so good. All right, now our snowman, he's drying out. But he needs something. He needs something. What does he need? I'm going to have to get new paint in a second. He needs a really happy little eyeball. So I'm going to get a small brush. I'm going to get my black paint. And one of the things I'm going to say is, well, it's still a little tacky. If it's tacky, it's not ready. If it's dry, it's ready because you're going to want to be able to rest your hand. Right? And so one of the tricks that I do when I'm painting and things like the snowman's eyeballs is I'm going to come up here in a separate thing. I'm going to do one circle. I had too much water on my brush, and so then a lot of my white is showing through and lifting back up it wasn't tacky, dry enough. But I'll do one eyeball smaller 
and then the one next to it bigger. Not only does that create this object just further away, it creates some personality to your snowman. Another thing that you could do is make not even circles, like the eyeballs can be uneven circles like rocks. Right? Here's the trick to not make yourself totally crazy on the map. One thing that you can do if you're worried that you're going to get the dot spacing correct on the mouth is that you can switch over to your turquoise blue and go dot, 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 dot. Okay? You make a big smile, you can go dot up here, you can go there. So this dot and this dot, every dot is a little further away. So these two are the closest, then these two, then these two, then these two. And if you somehow put your dots in a terrible space, what you could do is you could paint over them. Because it's easier to paint over that turquoise blue with your white paint than the black. It's just, it just is. So that's what that is. All right. Now, I don't make totally perfect little circles on the mountain because I feel like these are rocks that kids found. And each, oh, guess what? Each circle will get bigger. Each circle will get bigger as you go. Smiling green is people. So, yeah, I'll just say weird things every once in a while. You should say weird things in your studio every once in a while. You shouldn't be totally normal all the time. Oh, my goodness. It's exhausting. Sometimes it's fun to just be a big, goofy, weird person. It just is. And have a hat. Have a hat. And at the end, as always, I will tell you who made my hat and my apron. I buy them myself. I will get them for free. Tangling threads and this fabulous is Empty Nest Designs. Let me show you what cute thing that she does. She includes tissue covers. So you can be like, I'll oh, have tissue. And she's got some hysterical stuff. I really like her stuff. There's all kinds of people on, on Etsy. That's where I buy them that are good. She's just who, she does things for me when I ask her to. Like, will you make a Minecraft? <gasps> That's right. There's going to be a Minecraft episode. Because mm -hmm. my daughter's a friend of this guy, Stampy Cat, that's online. I've, I've watched a bunch of them now, just trying to make sure it was something good. And, and it really is, it's, you know very good uh, content creator for YouTube. Kid appropriate and she wants to do something for Stampy Cat so I said that we could do something for Stampy Cat. So that's going to be an exciting upcoming episode because she and I are going to paint together. I don't know how we're going to work out filming that but we have, we have matching aprons. She doesn't really watch these whole things so she, it won't like ruin the surprise. But we have matching aprons and Stampy Cat hats and it's all Minecraft, so that those of you in the world who are like have a Minecraft kid in your life and don't know how to impress them, I'm about to help you blow them away. You're going to be so popular in your own home. So yeah, just give these a nice coat. If you need to let these dry, you know, let them dry and then come back in and paint them again. But that's how you get the snowman. And look at that. Uh oh, uh oh. Is he done? We paint a snowman. We did. We did. We painted a snowman and we're gonna do the dance. We painted it. We painted it. We did it. We did it. We're so awesome. We're awesome and we did it. Yeah, that's not gonna catch on like nationally, but you can do that with me in secret. <laughs> in just one second, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get fresh water. Fresh water. <laughs> fresh water. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll notice that if the lipstick is on, the art party is still going on. That's like the new thing. <laughs> like, it was a weird conversation that happened on Twitter, and I was like, you know what? That's really true. If my lipstick is on, the art party is going on. So do what you got to do to make your painting space special. If you need to put on some lipstick to remind yourself that this is your special, special me time, do it. Um, no judgment there, whoever you are. But I'm just saying, I like lipstick. Maybe you like a cup of green tea. Whatever, maybe you like some like intense metal music, like whatever you need, give it to yourself. It's okay. It's okay to do something for in here. That's okay. It's not, it's not make you a bad person. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our little, little detail brush. And I'm 
going to get some white paint. And we're going to get in some star and a little beak and a little eyeball and some stuff. So this is really interesting. What I do here is I'm going to mix some... You're going to be like, really great? Yep. Yeah. You're going to put the eyeball in first in gray. I'm going to do a fairly big one. I like to have a fairly clean one. I do. Alright, here we go. So that's painted in gray. So this is a really cool trick that you'll be grateful for later. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna get a little bit of gray. And I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna create the top beak bottom peak portion now. Okay, and I'm going to just shave this up. Shave this up. Okay, and that's going to be a little bit of the top beak, bottom beak stuff that we're going to be doing. You got to love a top beak, bottom beak because, you know, having a whole beak is just so much more helpful. Then we're going to do a little bit of our a lighter version might need to put out some fresh yellow. And this will happen. See, that's why I'm like, never go to the middle of your paint pot because then your paint pot gets all corrupted. But I put out way more paint than I normally do when I'm just painting. Usually when I'm just painting, I'm putting out a small amount of paint, like whatever I need. And then, you know, then another little amount of paint and then another little amount of paint. So I'm going to put just a small amount of brown in my yellow. So it won't be the bright, bright yellow, but because I want the bright, bright yellow to be bright, bright yellow. I'm going to come here, and, but you'll see compared to what's underneath, it's super bright. I'm going to very lightly, just like we have been doing for the bird, for the scarf, get his little beak in, leaving the little dark bits underneath. Now I'm going to get some just yellow, yellow. And then it'll be so much brighter than what's underneath it. I'm going to just finish putting my beacon. You might need to knock your gray back a little bit. You know, just working that in. And then when we do some other stuff, we're going to finish that out. You can always do yellow and white if you want, like, another layer of color. Okay, so that's getting very, very in. It's getting very, very in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do star. All right, star. This you will need your canvas dry for, and I'm going to show you my star trick. So I've got my little teeny tiny square brush. It is a square, it's called a bright uh, number four. I'm going to come up here to this corner of my canvas, and I'm going to make a very thin fine line with my brush and I do that by using light pressure and resting my hand. That's how I do that. I'm going to make sure I taper my ends. I'm going to get an up and down line. Then I'm going to cross that line right in the middle and I'm going to cross this line across this line, this little X, that is a great way of making a star. Then, make a little dot in the center, and I'm going to make some soft round brush strokes coming around, applying, alright. I'm going to put my tiny, tiny brush in. I'm going to get my big square out. Now, another little thing that I can do here is I can go back to my blue and my purple, mix up another little batch, and I can come over here 
I'm getting a very, very, very light version of the sky. And dry brush carefully this light that is coming out. And it's going to go up over the, remember to paint around your edges. Looks so nice hung on the wall, you don't even know. By the way, it's just so nice to paint on a canvas like this. When you, you just don't know how nice it is to paint on such a good quality canvas. I'm just keep making those little light marks. You don't want to paint out your star, right? This can be hard, so just, just go light pressure. You can always add more paint. And listen, if you just do something that you hate, 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 guess what? Let it dry, paint over it. It's fine. Take it out a little bit into my sky. Okay. Nice, isn't it? So that gives us that feeling that there's light emanating out. You can tweak that as much as you need to. You can mess with that. Feel like you can. Okay, so I have just just I have something I'm getting kind of happy with. Make sure you just I work through in the birds. Bird makes sense. Okay. Now we're gonna do a weird thing. We are going to toothbrush. If you don't have one, I'm gonna give you a second to go get it. Again, I don't want to have to run that. So, go get your toothbrush. And uh, if I do, it's because I partner or something and it's like good for you and it gets this out further. If I am going to run one, that's what it would be for. We're going to get our brush a little wet. We're going to dip it in our slightly clean water. We're going to come over and brush our paint. Brush, 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 brush. Brush, 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 brush. White paint, white paint, a little bit of water. Now you can always test this on another space and another way. The reason I do the snow before I do the eyeball is I don't want a reflection in the eye I didn't put there. So, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. That's right, it's snowing. It's snowing on the snowman. Snowing on the sky. Snow, 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 snow. Hopefully Christmas music is playing right now that we officially licensed for Heart Party. I like to have some bigger splatters and some smaller splatters. This is my fun, fun time on the canvas. I love my snow. And you'll see why I cared about the eye reflection because it can be a problem. So, yeah, so you're in snow. Look at that. It snowed. <sighs> You're like, oh my god, we got the toothbrush out again. You know why we got the toothbrush out again? Because this little dude does stars, does snow, does foam on waves, and does sand. And I'm going to teach you all of these as we go so you can know how to do it. And then you get the white finger of art. Do you have the white finger of art? <laughs> do you have the white finger of art? I don't know if you do. But if you do, then you made snow. But listen, if you're like, oh my god, I cannot do that, lady, don't do it. Don't, don't make yourself unhappy, you know. Because, I don't know, I plugged that in. So don't make yourself unhappy. I'm going to, through the magic of shh, <laughs> Okay, so hair dryer. that's done, I'm going to get my a teeny tiny little square bright, and I'm going to get some black paint. Get some black, get some black. This is Mars black. I don't remember if I said it, but I'm sure it did. Let's come over here, and I'm going to leave a small 
strip of the gray showing. I'll leave a small strip of the gray showing. I'm painting the whole eyeball black. And I'm going to, where's my detail detail? I also have this detail, 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 teeny tiny little detail. I get some more of this black in a teeny tiny detail. I'm going to thin it with water. I'm going to make a very fine line under the beak. I'm also going to come down here and I'm going to perch this bird with little feet. Which is too little. Oh, wait, you're not seeing that. Let me. Bird, bird, bird. Not no. Okay, so perching, making two little downward claws, and then come over a little bit, make two little downward claws. See? And you can make a little highlight if you want to with some gray. Come get some gray and make a little downward. Come on, saying, hey, just a little highlight on his feet if you feel like you want to. Make the beat show more, all right? So once you get some white with your detail, 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 fine lining detail brush, okay? Fine lining detail brush. We're nearly done, guys. And then we're gonna do our dance. Because nobody's looking. We're gonna outline the eye. Outline the eye. Let's outline the eye. really like our time together. You don't know. I actually really feel you at home painting with me. Like I know what's happening. I know we're doing this together. I know we're having fun and doing art. And then I want you to grab, load up your brush, get some of it loaded on your little detail brush. Load it up, load it up, load it up. And then we're going to make a reflection. And to make the reflection, I'm going to make one big dot. And then one little dot. I need more white for that little dot, so just get more white. You need more white around the outside of the eye. You can just work that out. <gasps> and then, and here is the thing, this is that last final detail. I also will sometimes make a little white line along my black line to accent it, to show that detail important thing but it makes such a difference now first do the dance i painted it i painted it we did it and we painted it. we succeeded and we did it we completed and we painted it now it's done it's done and we're gonna hang it on our wall and we're awesome and we're awesome and we're awesome and we're awesome because we painted it and we painted it and that's so completely goofy and this is forever on youtube so that I'm like 95 going, what was I thinking? I never knew what it would be. Sign it. You can sign it on the edge. You can sign it right here. You can do letters like I did in the example, right? Where I had letters. I didn't really, I didn't really like it with letters, so I actually really like it. Like this is what I like. Just beautiful, but you could put the words like snow or peace on earth or no place like home, or do you want to build a guy made of snow, no copyright infringement, and you can write anything you want here. I do my writing with a bright or a very small square detail brush. Um, if you have fantastic handwriting, I say do it. Messaging is fun, pictures and words are strong together, but you know, I didn't really have mine, so I'm gonna, that's what art's about, is like saying, hey, I wanna do it differently. All right, your mission this holiday is to make stuff, give it from your heart to the people that you love. Um, if you have the gumption for it, go ahead and maybe sell a few pieces and make a little extra holiday cash and not feel it so much this season, right? Um, your mission is to like yourself, be nice to yourself, say three nice things about your painting to yourself right now. Find three things that you like and be nice about it Go on the Facebook page, share them with me. I love to see them. Tell me your art story. 
click comment. I read everything. You might notice it. I answer everything because I still can. Um, I don't know exactly at what point that becomes impossible, but I'm not at it yet, so let's keep going. Um, think about treating yourself to this canvas. Think about it. It's just beautiful. Imagine that on the wall. This is fantastic. Okay. I'm going to see you at the easel really soon. Have a really happy holiday from Heart Party to you. Just open those hearts. And I'll see you really soon. Bye bye. The lipstick is on, the art party is still going on. If you're not painting, you're not doing enough with your life. <laughs>